All right, peace. All right, so what we doing here? It rained, so I had to lay off for a few days. The soil is dried enough for me to work with it without destroying the soil structure. And what I've done is I've taken the first foot of earth out of this bed. And then I went down and started breaking up the compacted so uh, subsoil. And as you can see, it started fluffing up where it's nearly half, maybe six inches um, below where I started. So I dug down the foot, but when I broke everything up, it raised up six inches. So it's about six inches from the surface. And as I continue to work with this subsoil, and you can see how there are bits of clay with the red in it. Oops, the red in it. Now that red is iron. You know, and this is some of the substance that George Washington Carver used to make his dyes out of. He would take this kind of soil and he would create reds and oranges and dyes and paints and stuff. A lot of people don't know that Dr. Carver um, did more than just crop rotations or sweet potatoes, et cetera, et cetera. This man was actually dealing with dyes and he was a prolific artist. Beautiful paintings if you ever get a chance. I think some of it may be online or you may have to come down to Tuskegee and visit us and we'll take you to his museum. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add leaves to the subsoil. I'm gonna add some quail manure to the subsoil. I'm going to uh, dig it in, uh, twist it in so that it becomes part of it. And in biointensive agriculture, this process of aerating your soil two feet down, breaking up your subsoil, adding amendments to both the subsoil and the first foot of uh, topsoil. It's called texturizing your soil. So it's a little bit different than just saying soil texture, which refers, of course, to the uh, amount of silt, sand, or clay you have in your soil uh, mixture, which forms a loam. So that's what we're doing. Check you out in a little bit.